Hello there and welcome to this series of videos on databases and distributed systems. I've had numerous requests for these kinds of videos so I hope you enjoy them and over the series of videos we're going to cover everything from flat file to relational databases and how you get from one to the other using the process known as normalization. We're going to look at keys, indexes and links inside databases entity relationship modeling and structured query language is on the list as well as big data and distributed systems using database management systems. So I hope you enjoy them and let's dive right in. So what are databases exactly? Well a database is a collection of information that is organized and we need it that way so that we can manage access and update data as needed. Data is organized into rows, columns, and tables. Yes, we can have multiple tables. And it is indexed to make our lives easier to access and find relevant information. Data gets updated, expanded, and deleted as new information is added. And this is why it's important for us as database administrators to keep the information as accurate as possible. And we do that so we don't have problems later on down the line. So let's look at our first real piece of information. This is a flat file database. And a flat file database is information held in a single table. And each column in the table is called an attribute and each row is called a record. Now if you take a look at this flat file database, we actually have four rows or four records inside our database. And that's true of a flat file database. It uses very small amounts of data. And as we add more data in over time, the database grows larger and then it develops a big problem. And that's called data redundancy. And data redundancy just means that a lot of data is becoming, is getting replicated. So in order to solve the problem with flat file databases, you need to create something called a relational database. So in this case here, let's take a look at the flat file database and see why there is problems. Well, potentially you have the situation where you've got two records, both with the same student twice. In here, our attributes cover the student information. They cover the course that was sat by the student and also we have the teacher information. So as we move to a relational database, we need to think about the breaking up of this flat file database into smaller tables, as well as reducing the data replication or redundancy in our database as well. So now we know that in order to fix a flat file database, we need to use relational databases. And our relational database might look something like this. So I've removed the teacher information from the table and created a new table called staff. And that contains the teacher ID, teacher name, teacher specialism. And in relational databases, we link different tables using keys. And to not overcomplicate things, relational databases are made up of lots of smaller tables linked together. And that reduces our redundancy, but the problem is they become more complex to create tables and maintain them. So now let's look at the keys that are involved. We have something called a primary key and a foreign key inside our tables, as well as something else called a composite key. So here in our table, you can see that the student ID is a primary key. That is unique to the person. Now although we still have duplicated data, normally an ID is unique. Jim Smith will have no other ID than 67678. Lucy will always have the student ID 67222 and Jane will always have 67677. Each teacher also has a unique primary key so, for example, Mr. Sorrell will have the teacher ID 4445 and Mr. Smith will always have the teacher ID 4443. The unique identifiers don't change 
and that means we don't have duplicated data. So in your exam, if you're explaining what a primary key is, the key word to use is a unique identifier. And primary keys are usually IDs or numbers that are generated especially for that purpose. And the first column in your relational database is normally your primary key field. Now every table must have a primary key and primary keys can't be null. Null just means have, has no value. But a foreign key enables us to link tables together. And a foreign key is any field in the table which is the primary key in another table. So down here, we know that the teacher ID is a primary key in the staff table. However, it is a foreign key inside the students table. So if I said to you, what teacher does Jane Jones have? And you would say, Jane Jones has the teacher 4445. We link down to our table and we go 4445 is Mr. Sorrell and he teaches mathematics. And that's how a foreign key works. So in our example, the teacher ID field in the students table is a foreign key because it links the primary key in the staff table. Now sometimes a primary key may not be obvious. You might have to combine two columns or two attributes together in order to create something that is truly unique. And when we have to combine attributes or columns together, we call that a composite key. And this is a combination of two or more columns in a table that can be used to uniquely identify each row in the table. Uniqueness is only guaranteed when the columns are combined. When taken individually, the columns do not guarantee uniqueness. So, so far, we've discussed flat file databases, we've discussed relational databases, we have discussed primary keys, foreign keys, and composite keys. Now let's talk about the data. Now it's important that data is consistent and it ensures that constraints placed on the database such as primary and foreign keys are adhered to. There's no point in having a primary key if it's not going to be forced to be unique. Any transactions in the database that are about to happen need to see all previous changes otherwise we could get unexpected results. And what that means is if you try and edit or change any data in your database, that needs to be fully committed before we carry out the next command to do something in our database. So we need to be consistent across all tables that we're handling the data properly. When it comes to data integrity, integrity means the correctness of data over the lifetime of that data. If our data is incorrect, then that's going to cause serious problems. If we enforce data integrity, that means that the data is correct. When it enters the database, it will be queried and it will be updated. And until it leaves the database, it must be complete, it must be accurate, and it must be consistent. And there are three key types of integrity that we use in databases. And the first one is entity integrity. And that usually acts on the primary key. So it states that every table must have a primary key and the column or columns chosen to be the primary key should be unique and not null. So that integrity is forced and it makes sure that you've always got a primary key in every table and it always has a unique value. Our referential integrity acts on the foreign key and it states that any foreign key value can only be in one of two states. And the first state works like we know, so it's linked to a primary key from another table. The second state is that the foreign key can be null, and this means that there's no connection at all, or there's no relationship. So primary keys have to be not null, so they have to have a value, whereas foreign keys don't have to have a value, but then there would be no connection between the, the tables themselves. And then you've got domain integrity. And this acts upon the data. So it specifies that all columns in a relational database must be declared upon the defined domain. 
and a database domain is the data type used by a column in the database. So this data and the data types that we use can be built in and we can build in our data types while we're creating the table itself. And domain integrity means that you must use the data type specified when building the table. So if you expect variable characters or varchars in a, in a table, in a field, that's what you must use. So it forces the user to use the correct data types. And that's similar to validation. And then we have data redundancy. And we've already talked about this. And we've discussed that data redundancy is wasted data or duplicated data. And if the data is held in more than one place in the database, then this is known as redundancy. And we need to remove it at all costs. And it can cause weakness in data integrity. And to limit redundancy, we enact normalization on our databases. And we cover normalization in another video. So be sure to check that out. The next thing to discuss is database views. And when we talk about views, I want you to think about filtering the information. Now a database view allows a number of tables and records to be restricted so that only certain users can see certain sets of data. And that might be privileges assigned by the database administrator for staff and managers and things like that. So you could see different parts of the database compared to somebody else. So this view of the database hides records of people who are older than 25 by combining access rights and creating views. The database developer can restrict data to different uh, groups of users in any way they wish. So they use something called SQL or structured query language and that is the language that we use to talk to databases. So the first thing we've got is we've got a command called create a view and we create a view called young people. And then what we do is we say select all from personal where age is less than or equal to 25. And like we said, that hides records of people who are older than 25. So we can see all the young people in our database and it gets rid of all those that are older than 25. So the reason why we use database views are for things like data protection and key data can be protected from different groups of users using a combination of access rights and views. We can encapsulate, you might have heard that word from object oriented programming, encapsulate complicated SQL queries. So instead of me as the database administrator writing out SQL queries to run reports and things like that, um, we can basically package those queries up and reuse them later on. And that's similar to creating a procedure where we can just call it and reuse it. We can also simplify access. So if data is spread over multiple tables, then views can help simplify access for less experienced users. That means people don't have to navigate between tables to find information. The view is run and it displays all the data. Also, it can be created to improve performance. So views can be set up with performance in mind and then reused by other developers. And this can be another advantage of encapsulating key queries. So again, we've got the reusability and we can recall them. So that's our first video completed. All we needed to do in this video is lay out all the basics of databases. So join me in the next one where we'll be looking at entity relationship modeling. And I'll see you in the next one.